and I have birds living right up here, but they refuse to use the birdhouse. I don't know why. Birds do what birds do. Welcome to Keeper of the Mountain. Well, today's little bit's going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, as you can see, I'm outside my shop today starting, and I got a good reason for that. You know, the YouTube channels that, like mine, there's always a, a group of us that kind of work together and talk to each other and encourage one another. Even if, even if we don't do videos together, we really kind of support each other. and, and it's kind of it's really nice to have people like that on YouTube that you know that you get along with and you like what they do and they like what you do and things like that and there was there's a channel that I like a lot um, haven't seen much from them lately and his it's cutworm 59 now cutworm he's I mean that's just what we all knew him as as the cut you know cutworm and he works with Crosley's. Uh, he loves Crosley's. Well, he was really working with me and we were visiting quite a bit there for a while. And then I got really sick and he was reached out to me to see how I was doing. And he encouraged me while I was sick. And and uh, we did a one video that, that we consulted on was this thing right here. See that ukulele body with a license plate on the top of it? It's a birdhouse. And I have birds living right up here, but they refuse to use the birdhouse. I don't know why. Birds do what birds do. And anyway, that was Cutworm's idea. And we worked together on that for a, a, an episode. And I told him I'd film the birds when they started using the nest and send him the film. And you know, they never started using it. It's, you're looking at it. The most they've ever done is perch on the top of it and so that they could get into the holes above it. Anyway, I filmed this because it's come to my attention that Cutworm 59 is really, really sick. He is, uh, I mean, at having all kinds of physical issues. Uh, I learned about it from our peak. He's a channel that's from, started out up north and ended up down in Georgia and he's got a rat rod he's, he built and bunch of mechanical stuff and uh, banjo stuff and just all around silliness that that kind of fits with my channel a lot and and he was posting on Facebook and stuff about it and so that's how I learned about it so I thought I'd shoot this video in support of Cutworm 59 and and hope that he's doing good and getting better uh, last I heard it wasn't going too well for him and if I find out by the time I'm done editing this video, I'll let you know what the results are of what's going on. I just hope that, hoping for the best for, for Cutworm. He's, uh, he's one of the good guys. and We look forward to seeing him doing better, I hope. So anyway, let's get on to the little bit that I'm doing today. It's not a whole lot. I've got a lot of stuff in the works, but I got to get it finished enough to where I can put it to film and we can have a cohesive project, you know, where you see it from start to finish. I got a radiator thing going to hold the radiator in. I got another thing to hold the exhaust manifolds on, but today I've got some other parts that I want to show you that I've got that I got to put on. So let's put a little more of this engine together, get a little bit closer to running it. Well, I got a whole bunch of bolts and nuts and stuff here and brackets. And there's a reason for that. You see here a while back, probably a year and a half ago, I did a film where I was mad. I was upset with myself. And just really disappointed in myself because I filmed taking the engine apart. And in filming taking the engine apart,
I accidentally erased the film and right now is when I could really use that film to reference stuff because I was counting on that to figure out where all the bolts went and what the right bolts and things were and for this and that and the other and the way it ended up is I just lost that film and I don't know where any of these bolts go I don't know what the right bolts are for what so I've got to kind of figure that out I've been buying an awful lot of of uh, studs and nuts in order to replace them because you know I like that here's another part I got this is an oil filled pressure gauge it goes up to 160 pounds this is going on the side of the engine so I know what the oil pressure is so when we fire this bad boy up I can make sure I've got oil pressure and I'm not running this thing dry let's go put it on the engine So here we go, I've got the pressure uh, gauge right here. This goes up to 160 pounds. I doubt I'll have more than 60 pounds of oil pressure, maybe 80 if I'm lucky. And then this would be the solenoid for the idiot light on the dashboard. So that ought to, I mean, eventually I'm gonna run a tube from here to the, to the gauge that's gonna be in the dashboard. But for now, I've got this one out here it's oil filled so it can take some vibration without hurting it and that'll be nice when we start the motor to make sure we're running everything right now you might remember that I had this adapter that fits on the distributor and it's got it's supposed to have a clip on this side and one right across on this side but as you can see it's all busted off there so I really can't fix that so I had to get another one here we are I had to order it in it's uh, right here in the but it looks exactly the same it's only it's got it has both of its clips so let's get that on here the distributor cap is now installed all I have to do is get the uh, coil hooked up and of course the wire that plugs in there and the vacuum line over to the carburetor which isn't even installed yet so we'll get to that in time. Here I have the temporary valve cover for the side you know I guess it's the push rod cover maybe you call it the cam cover I don't know it goes on the side of the motor and the one that I'm going to keep is brand new I got. I'm going to uh, copper plate it and stick that on there later. But for now, to get this thing running and deal with all the banging around and installing of the motor, I'm going to use this one. So now i got to find the bolts and everything to put it in. Next, I have this cover to figure out. I think I'm going to get some studs to hold this on. But... This, these screws just go right in here like this and hold it on. I'm just going to have it in, on here temporary. There's a gasket that goes behind there. There's little washer gaskets that go on each one of these holes. And when I get the studs and everything, I'll, I'll get that done. So that's, that's on the to-do list. Another thing on the to-do list is to get the bolts and get this thing in. I gotta find the right bolts for it. The alternator that came with this engine was just held on with a pair of vice grips because somebody had twisted the bolt off inside the aluminum housing and it was all fused in there and nasty and by the time I tried to remove it I figured it would just ruin the housing and everything so that I just need to get another alternator. So I went online searching for an alternator for a direct replacement. $180. It was ridiculous. So, 
I got to look around and thinking, this is a one-off uh, engine. This is a hot rod, a street rod, whatever you want to call it. Why don't I just use a one wire? So, uh, you know, a one wire alternator. So all I got to do is have one wire from the alternator to the battery and we'll be golden. So that's what I did. I got to looking around and I'll show you what I found. And it was quite the deal. Um, I really did well on this. I'm not sure how this box is supposed to open. Looking for an opening. Here we go. Here's an opening. You're going to love this. I, I know I am. This is a chrome one wire Delco alternator. Now this bad boy is pretty. It's got all the holes I need in it. It even came with a bolt. Now I just got to figure out where to mount it on the engine and build a bracket for it. Okay, here's the alternator. Now I got to figure out where to put it. I'm wondering if I should put it here. The only problem with putting it here is it's right by the hot exhaust. I don't know if that's good for it. I could put it up here. It's still near the exhaust and probably in the way of the heater hoses. I can put it over here. It seems to be pretty much out of the way. I could line it up like that. Got a bolt here for the tensioner. I don't know where I'd get the bottom bolt though. So, but I've got bolt holes down here. I really don't want to put it over here because that'll be in the way of the steering. So, I'm thinking it's probably going to end up going right here. Somewhere right here. And I just have to figure out a way to get a bracket up here to hold on to it. Because this seems to be the best spot for it. Staying out of the way of all this stuff. Because I got a radiator hose coming out of here, heater hoses coming out of here. I got all the heat from the exhaust. I really don't want to hook it to that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Where do you think I ought to put this? Maybe I ought to mount it this direction and have it swing away like this as it tightens. I've got three pulleys here I can line it up to. These two would make it go faster. This one would make it go a little slower. This is a pretty low RPM engine, so I think I want to be on one of these back tube pulleys just to spin this fast enough to, you know, make the dream happen. I don't know, you tell me what you think and I'll consider all ideas because I really don't know where I want to put this. Should I mount it with a swivel down? Mount it with a swivel up? Should I put it here? Should I put it over here in the way of everything? <laughs> Put it down here where it's out of the way, but my goodness, there's a lot of heat right here. I don't know that that would bother it. I think that's where it was before it was right here, the old one, and it worked fine. And I kind of like this spot an awful lot. You tell me, because I don't know. I don't have any idea what to do here. So I'm open for all takers on this one. This comes from the fuel tank, and this goes to the carburetor. Fuel pump installed. So if I got it right side up, because going the other way, it ain't going to work too well with the motor mount. So hmm, hopefully I got it right. I think that's the way it came off. But like I said, I erased all the video of me taking all this apart, so I don't know how anything goes for sure. Guess we'll find out, because like I've told you many times, I'm not the guy to tell you what to do, because I don't know what I'm doing. This isn't my area of profession. I'm just a guy out in the shop banging around with tools hoping something turns out and hoping this thing runs despite me. So anyway, come along with the journey if you like, but by all means don't expect me to be your instructor because I don't know what I'm doing. few things off my list well thanks for watching my little bit for today because as you know you got to do a little bit every day because a lot of littles make a big and that's my little for today
and you know like and subscribe if you if you like what you're watching and you're interested in seeing more and one day we'll be out driving this thing it'll be fun see you next video